What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we have some Detroit Lions news. The Lions have made a couple of moves today. One move that definitely surprised me, and also the Lions have signed a player to the roster that we talked about yesterday. So let's get it started. You no, know, I got a shout out to the uh, man because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Third and ten, Brooks in trouble. And throws it backwards. Welcome, everybody, to another video. Glad you guys are here. And, yes, we have some Detroit Lions news. We have a couple of things to talk about. You guys can see the title. You see the thumbnail. So I don't need to keep you waiting. Let's start off with the first part first. And this is that the Detroit Lions have signed tight end Darren Fells to the roster. Now, yesterday we got some surprising news that tight end Josh Hill, who we signed this offseason, the 30-year-old from the New Orleans Saints that had ties, you know, with Dan Campbell, with Aaron Glenn, is retiring from the NFL. He decided to retire yesterday, and it left a little bit of a hole at the Detroit Lions tight end position. It's not like they lost, you know, some big time receiving threat or, you know, anything that's kind of irreplaceable, but we did lose a really nice blocker there that's proven in this league. You know, he wasn't a huge receiving threat, but he was proven. Now, the Detroit Lions have guys that can fill out that blocking tight end role. I mean, Jake Hausman, Brock Wright, uh, Hunter Thedford, all those guys could fill that role for the Detroit Lions. They have good size. That's kind of what they're known for. But none of them have really experience, okay? None of those guys are proven. You know what you're going to get. So the Detroit Lions have signed tight end Darren Fells. Now, there was a report that came out that he was going to have a visit with the Detroit Lions like right after we heard this news. The Lions wasted no time to say, hold up, we got to fix this. Because this came after the draft. The draft was over. We signed some UDFA blockers for competition for depth. But the Lions wanted to make sure they got someone that's proven. And that's what they did here with the six foot seven, 270-pound tight end from the Houston Texans. Now, the good thing about Fells is he has a connection with Detroit. He was here in 2017. And while he didn't have a huge statistical production, he was effective and really what Darren Fells you know he's able to block obviously has outstanding size he's not on the younger side he is 35 years old now so this is not a long-term option but it does give you someone that's proven in the league and as a receiver his big body being a former basketball player you know an international basketball player he didn't play college football just anybody out there being a former basketball player I mean that's what he's good at you know you throw it up to him in the end zone he's got outstanding size and kind of box out defenders that's where he's really nice and we've seen that production throughout his entire career being able to make plays in the end zone come up with touchdowns on grabs. So for the Lions, it gives them a proven number two tight end. Not necessarily to say that he'll be the number two heading into the year, but it's someone that at least is like kind of like a safety blanket. Like, hey, we have this guy. We know we're going to get. We're not completely sure what we're going to get with Alizé Mack, Hunter Thedford, Brock Wright, Jay Cobb. We don't exactly know what we're going to get there. We know we got TJ Hawkinson, and the Lions are going to, you know, play through TJ Hawkinson. Hawkinson's going to be the guy at the tight end position from what we've seen the Lions do this offseason. But it is nice to have a number two that you just know what you're going to get, you know, in case anything happens, but also just to have a reliable number two option. So this makes a lot of sense for the Lions. Probably wasn't that expensive. It's not going to be a long-term option, but hey, maybe you go through training camp and you fall in love with some of these younger guys. You're like, hey, we, we don't need him, but at least for now, you know what you're going to get in Darren Fells, where worst case scenario, you have him locked up for this season and Darren Fells, the Detroit Lions, a big body that can block, but also can be a red zone threat. Okay. So it gives Jared Goff a nice little option with someone that's experienced. So that's great. You know, Darren Fells is back with Detroit. Well, Welcome back, Darren Fells. This definitely caught me off guard. I was not expecting to see this. I was actually eating, and I didn't expect to see this. And this is that the Lions have released running back Kerryon Johnson. What? What? We're going to dive into this a little bit. And the reason is, let me just talk about why it surprised me, all right? This is why I was surprised with the Kerryon Johnson release. I wasn't necessarily surprised with the fact that he was released. I was surprised on how early this happened. Now, maybe it had something to do with the Lions looking at the amount of players they're going to have on the roster and after signing Darren Fells and how they see it playing out through training camp. So they need to clear space. But I doubt that. It just surprises me how early something like this would happen. How early the Detroit Lions released Kerryon Johnson. I mean, we're in the beginning of May. We're not in training camp, things like that yet. You know, I could have seen going through training camp then deciding that you're going with these young guys and then you release Karen Johnson but I am a little bit surprised on how early this happened but I'm not shocked that it did happen, unfortunately. Karen Johnson was drafted back in 2018. We traded up to get Karen in the second round. I mean, and I had super high hopes for Karen, and I think all of us did. I mean, Karen came in in 2018 and balled out. The guy averaged 5.4 yards per carry. He was on pace for the 1,000-yard season. He gave us the first 100-yard rusher since Reggie Bush against the Patriots. I won't forget that game. It was outstanding. It was our first win of the year. That was a great game. But then, unfortunately, we got about halfway through the season, and Karen Johnson went down with an injury. And then we had high hopes heading into 2019. And unfortunately, 2019, it just wasn't a very good year. You can see he struggled as a runner. He only averaged 3.6 yards per carry in 2019. And then once again, 
he dealt with another injury uh, that knocked him out. We were going through practice squad running backs. Like, we were trying to figure out depth there. So then heading into 2020, the Detroit Lions, Matt Patricia, Bob Quinn, they draft DeAndre Swift in the second round. Now, they let DeAndre Swift kind of settle into his role, and they, they took their time to get him involved. But then they also signed better running back Adrian Peterson. Now, I think a lot of us believe that Peterson would be a nice depth piece, maybe a goal line presence, you know, kind of that vet that can help out carry on, but maybe not, you know, the top guy. But what it turned into was Jerry Peterson became the guy for the Detroit Lions in the backfield. And then, of course, then once they started giving DeAndre Swift more opportunities, he became the guy. But Kerryon Johnson, who, you know, I had high hopes for. Remember, I made the resurgence video. I was thinking Kerryon Johnson, he's got to be healthy, you know, get back to that 2018 form. It just didn't happen. I mean, obviously, I would like to see him get more opportunities than just over 50 attempts. But on those attempts, it just didn't look great. We saw when Swift went down, the running game really struggled. Kerryon Johnson last season, on just over 50 attempts, only 3.5 yards per carry. Even if you just like stats alone, I mean, aside from even watching the film, even just stats alone, the, the, the fact that Swift was able to do what he was able to do, you know, when he was on the field, and how much of a drop-off this really took when, you know, Kerryon, AP were holding it down when Swift was not healthy, it really showed that, hey, we're behind an above-average offense line by PFF. Okay, Swift is able to run for 4.6 yards per carry, and you can see the struggles that Carrion is having behind the same line. And Adrian Peterson, it looked like he was able to find those holes, but he was even having more success. And he was like, you know, he's on the older side. He's definitely slower right now. So there was some legitimate concern uh, with the vision of Carrion Johnson. But he did do two things well for the Detroit Lions. Number one, he stayed healthy. And obviously not a lot of attempts probably kept him healthy. But number two... He also was a really good pass blocker that could pass catch. And I thought that would definitely be enough to at least get him through training camp, get him an opportunity to work with Deuce Daly. Now, maybe they didn't think it was a great zone running scheme schematic fit. So maybe that had something to do with it. Again, maybe they could have just tried to clear roster space. I'm not 100% sure, you know, what are the small reasons behind it. But it could have just been simply they saw in film. They didn't love the film of it. And they decided to go elsewhere. And I didn't love the film of Kerry and Johnson recently either. This offseason, they went out and they drafted your seventh round pick, Jermar Jefferson. Now, they got that seventh round pick from the Cleveland Browns when they traded up in the fourth round. And they got that seventh round pick. Now, I predicted in the fifth round they would draft a running back. But they went in the seventh round and they drafted Jermar Jefferson out of Oregon State. And after watching him, I was very impressed. You know, I loved the film. I was like, okay, he's a perfect scheme fit. You know, he's a great zone scheme fit. He felt like he should have been a mid round pick. You could see the outstanding vision there. I like, this is the really nice spot and that's why i was like hey don't be surprised if this guy takes the number three role right away and is pushing for the backup role for the detroit Lions in his first season because i was that impressed with this film and his consistent production year in and year out to do it now definitely surprised me a little bit the fact that they haven't done workouts or anything like that the lions did also sign other two udfa running backs including rakeem boyd and also dedrick mills now dedrick mills out of nebraska to me from the little i've seen reminds me of like a you know short area battering ram or a red zone a red zone running back right you're near the goal line you give it to the big guy. Now, Jamal Williams has held that role down with the Green Bay Packers, but maybe this guy gets the opportunity there. He's also lined up at fullback. And then, of course, you have Rakeem Boyd. Now, Rakeem Boyd definitely struggled last year behind Arkansas, played in a tough conference, though. But in 2019, he was outstanding, over 1,100 yards rushing, over six yards per carry. He was really good. They ran some Wildcat in 2019. So I need to watch more film those guys because maybe there's something they start seeing in those two guys they really like as well uh, for depth. But obviously, that's against college. You know, it's a different level of competition. So, yes, Karrion shocked me that he was cut this early wasn't shocked that he was released I could have saw this happening the injuries because you know he just really seemed to struggle with the vision side of it reading the holes concern there that Karen Johnson took a backseat to Adrian Peterson not necessarily Swift I mean Swift was a baller but to Adrian Peterson and I think you know maybe the Lions were a little bit concerned by that as well so they've went a different direction I hate to hear it because you know I was like everybody else in 2018 hey we found our answer running back the guy just had 100 yards rushing against the Patriots I haven't done it since Reggie Bush he's on pace for a thousand yards all he's got to do is come back and be healthy. But ever since then, it just hasn't been the same. And, and you really hate to see it. But I think he's going to get an opportunity elsewhere. I hope he does. Maybe he ends up with Detroit, you know, down the road. Maybe he ends up back here. But I hope he gets an opportunity elsewhere. I'm sure he will. Uh, you know, he's a really good guy. You know, we've, we've heard only great things about him off the field. And, uh, you know, as long as he can stay healthy, hopefully, you know, health-wise, he's good. And, you know, last season he was able to. They know about how, how high of a pick he was. The fact that we trade up to get him, how great he was in his rookie year. Someone's going to give him an opportunity. I hope he goes out there and balls out. And he does his thing. And he stays healthy. And that doesn't mess with him anymore. And he's just like, hey, I am that guy that you trade up to get. I hope that happens for carry on. It is a little heartbreaking that, man, we, we were so excited for this dude. And now it's just like, well, a couple years ago, we're thinking we have our answer. A couple years later, you're saying, wow, he's released. So kind of crazy how fast things change. Running backs are very difficult to draft. We look at the numbers. It's statistically the second hardest position to find a year one impact. It's tough to draft running backs. It really is. Unfortunately, Kerry Johnson has been released. But good luck, Kerry, man, going forward. Hopefully, he figures it out. Maybe we'll see him, you know, down the road in the future. We will see. But uh, yes. 
Thank you for the great moments, Karen. You definitely gave us some. I will never forget that Patriots game. That was awesome. But he, Karen Johnson, is no longer a Detroit Lion. And, you know, this goes to show you. I mean, Stu Staley talks extremely high about him. But you just, you know, things can happen. Things can really, really happen fast. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I can't say I'm shocked that he was released. I am just shocked how early it did happen. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Welcome to Detroit, Darren Fells. And I'm out.